what's going on everybody this is another uh video this is gonna be like a, re a reaction video uh to a good a video that i saw on the crimson cure uh youtube channel i want to be sure to uh shout out the source of this video uh crimson cure so go check her channel out if you can a lot of good content uh there this video is um about sexy red that you're about to see and of course there's a lot of backlash and you know just a lot of uh talk about sexy red you know both both uh positive and negative and i just want to uh share with you some of her thoughts and i want to um you know just uh interject at certain points uh where um i might disagree so first i'm gonna just play uh this video right here and then i'll chime in as needed and give my thoughts on uh sexy red and like entertainers and just uh hip-hop in general and also we're gonna get into the broken home and of course it's all connected so enjoy and of course please like subscribe etc etc i hate that girl i hate her I hate her. I wish somebody would make a diss record against her ass. I think I'm a, I'm about to write a diss. I don't like that bitch. I don't, I don't like her at all. Like, she be single-handedly playing in y'all face. And I said to myself, who who the fuck is her fan base? This is why I hate when y'all listen to her music. Like, y'all keep saying, like, yeah, man. But the beat hit. I don't give a fuck how much the motherfucking shit. Let me tell you something. Every time I hear that bitch in my motherfucking car, I turn her shit off because I know she detrimental to the black community. I know she mother influencing young girls to pop they pussy open for a baby. <clears throat> I know that I know that's what that bitch doing. And in the same breath, she's influencing these young girls to be ratchet, nasty and trifling. And then she's telling y'all that y'all got carpet hair. So not only is she's influencing y'all to do that, but she's also insulting y'all at the same time. I hate that bitch. I promise you. I, I promise you. I hate the fact that social media make everybody famous. I hate this. That's why every time I see one of my sisters going in on that bitch, I repost, repost, share, like, comment as much as I motherfucking can. As much as I can. If y'all women up here got younger girls, okay, and within their teenage years, please talk to your girls, please talk to your teenagers about this bitch. Make sure you tell them that this is not the way to go because that's her fan base. Because everybody that I talk to don't really like her. So I be trying to figure out who who is her fan base. It's these younger girls. It's these younger girls with fam. She is going to tear y'all daughter's self-esteem down. Keep fucking letting your daughter listen to this. I'm going to say some crazy shit. Keep letting <laughs> your daughter listen to this bitch and see what happens. She gonna tell your, I promise. She gonna tell yourself. She gonna tell your daughter self esteem down piece by piece. Sexy red is making a mockery out of black girls' hair and saying it looks like carpet and saying that it's unattractive, along with turning your daughter into whores. I hate this bitch with everything in me. She gonna tell your. All right, now let's head down to the lot where Tom Brady is. All right, hold on. Let me get that uh, get that commercial out of there real quick. All right, we're back. Now I'm gonna let it play some more. I want to hear uh, what Crimson Cure has to say, and then I'll I'll be interjecting, and I'll be talking about talking about what both of these women have to say. Everything that this lady said, profanity laced or not, is facts. And then we got these comments. So y'all ain't listen to Trina and Kim. As a parent, why y'all can I'm tired of every time we bring up how bad these this new crop of so-called female rappers is, these young folks want to throw up Kim and Foxy and listen, first of all, at the bare minimum, raunchy or not, raunchy or not. Kim and all them, they had bars at least. At least you could listen to the song 
You can name three Lil' Kim songs. You can name three. There was bops. Okay, there was hits. All right, hits. Whether you liked her style, whether you liked the raunchiness of her lyrics or not, okay? At bare minimum, there was the balance of talent to go to to go along with the raunchy. So, okay, that's the first um, part I want inter- to interject on. Um, I think that whoever made that comment, uh, you know, bringing up uh, artists of the past of the '90s, right? Like Trina, uh, Kim, Foxy Brown, uh, they have definitely a solid uh, point there, uh, because. Each generation tends to think that their generation is always better than the generation that uh, comes after. Uh, I remember when I was young listening to hip hop back in the day and people that were older, right? My mother's generation would say, oh, that's not music or y'all don't know what music is and stuff like that. Right. She grew up on the, you know, Motown Commodores, Ohio Players, all that stuff, right? Earth, Wind & Fire, Parliament, Funkadelic. And, of course, that's great music, right? Teddy Pendergrass, et cetera, et cetera, right? But that's just something that each generation just tends to do. They tend to, um, you know, forget about, like, the bad artists that they might have had at the time. And since so much time has passed, they can look back and basically select all the greatest artists and they say, oh, our music was better. And my mother's dad, right, my grandfather, he thought the music of his generation was the best, right? He's listening to Duke Ellington and uh, Dizzy Gillespie and the Bebop and uh, Miles Davis, right? Things like that, Coltrane. He thought the music of his generation was better. So each... I think each generation just tends to be biased, um, right, to their, you know, the events and things that were happening, right, in the time period of their youth. So I think that here, uh, the Crimson Cure is being a little bit uh, subjective, you know, um, here, especially by saying that uh, Kim had bars, you know, for example, or for those that don't understand the slang, right, good good lyrics, right, was able to actually rhyme and things and things of that nature. Um, because that's a very subjective opinion. Like, I don't really remember, say, like, Trina having bars, so to speak, right, or, or being wowed by the lyrics. Plus, we don't even know uh, who actually really wrote, you know, those uh, songs. There's a lot of ghost writing and things going on like that. Just like uh, today, as far as the uh, raunchiness that was there, right, we saw... Uh, Kim, even though she can be maybe considered of the grandmother of this type of stuff in hip hop, right? Kim, the famous uh, cover uh, picture with the, you know, the legs open, right? Scantily clad outfit. We saw Foxy Brown, Trina, of course. Um, We saw the girl with uh, JT Money. Man, I can't think of her name right now. She wound up marrying a genuine back in the day. Um, ah, I can't remember her name, but. You guys know who I'm talking about. You could put her in the comments if you remember. Uh, but the girl um, that she was alongside, JT Money. Um, yeah, Charlie Baltimore, right? So they were all, you know, selling, you know, selling the same idea uh, back in the day. So that's the first uh, point that, you know, I want to uh, disagree. It's very subjective. You say, oh, well, they at least had bars. So if they had lyrics, are uh, you saying... That, okay, Sexy Red, would, you know, what she's doing would be okay if she had lyrics. Um, so, to, to me, that's like um, a slippery slope to get into that type of comparison. Like, oh, well, the lyrics are better, so therefore it's all right to, you know, um, you know we'll give you a pass on the, the you know, quote-unquote uh, raunchiness. A second thing I want to address is what the lady actually said in the video and what I feel is like, and this happens a lot, I believe, is that often we take this approach uh, from a victim's perspective of, oh, they are trying to ruin your children, you know, outside forces. They are trying to program <clears throat> your children or Sexy Red is going to turn your 
child into such and such or lower her self-esteem and things like that. And this is where uh, parents, good parenting comes in. Um, if you look at videos of most of these hip hop concerts, these big concerts like Rolling Loud and, you know, these summer jams and uh, things of that nature. And hip hop is, of course, a worldwide phenomenon, provides a lot of income, a lot of jobs for people all across the world. It's mostly white people at these concerts, um, young white people. OK, so there's something else, obviously, right, that is affecting the uh you know, the inner cities in the black community. And it just, to me, it comes down to the family structure again, right? Um, the the single parent structure, the broken home. And again, this is not to knock single moms or single dads or anything like that. This is this is knocking the the structure, the this broken home structure, not glorifying it, saying, hey, it's better to have two parents in the house as opposed to one. Because this is what happens. We all know that certain things are not appropriate for children, right? Their brain is still developing. We keep adult entertainment placed to the side. So um, how I feel about Sexy Red is really not that important. But what I do understand is that it is adult entertainment, right? Um, it's kind of like the probably the you know the lowest level of adult entertainment right but there's like adult entertainment for a reason it's for those who have mature minds right brains that are developed and that they can separate a uh, fact from fiction right a older lady that's mature she has a good job right she goes to the gym works out whatever she's paying her bills she has a career she's an accountant what have you She's not going to listen to Sexy Red and, and say, you know what, um, you know, my bills is due. <laughs> so let me go out there and, um, you know, find some guy with some money and, and trick and get, you know, and try to, uh, you know, get some extra money, you know, so I can uh, go and buy me a Birkin bag or something like that. They're just going to listen to the music, be entertained and keep it moving. Just like a mature person is not going to watch Goodfellas and go out there and say, you know what, um. I'm going to, uh, you know, start commit, you know, go rob a bank. I'm gonna start committing crimes. Or I want to go join a mob or something like that. All right. It's for mature audiences only. Right. They say that at the beginning of the movie. It's the same with with the music. It's for mature audiences only. The problem is, is when you have the, a broken home structure. Right. It's hard to supervise the children. All right. I remember growing up and sometimes. Right. My mother, <clears throat> my mother would be going to work and I would be coming home from from school. But she worked a second shift. Right. I think at the time she was working like two to eleven or three to eleven. So it was one of those situations where like I would just be getting in there and she was leaving. All right. So it was just, you know, me and her at the time. And basically I was old enough to where, you know, I could take care of myself, like, you know, fix some something to eat. Um, you know, and, and make sure I lock the doors and stuff like that. But she had to go to work. Right. But guess what? Nobody's watching me. I have 12, 13 years old. Nobody's watching me. So guess what I'm doing? I'm doing what boys at that age do. I'm looking around the house. I'm snooping. <laughs> I'm looking at TV. I'm watching whatever I want on TV. I'm, I'm listening to whatever kind of music I want to listen to. That's what, that's what happens. And that, that's just like one, one example Right. When you have when you have that the household like that, it's not to demonize anybody. It's just what it is. It creates cracks in the armor. It it, it uh creates opportunities for for the devil, if we want to use that word to 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 get in. So you have a mom or a dad. Right. He's working hard, stressed out, you know, just some, from the responsibilities. They might not be able to cover all the bases as far as the protection is concerned around the child. And that's how they get exposed, you know, to, to the adult entertainment, right? How many of us young men, you know, found, you know, porn at a super, super young age, right? Accidentally, you know, parents not around, snooping around the closet. Or you seen them put it somewhere and then you just remembered and next thing you know, they gone or whatever. And next thing you know, you in there and you're like, holy snap. And you watching one of these movies, you know, big booties, 
part 56 or something like that. And, you know, and next thing you know, it's off to the races. Right? So I think a lot of it is just the fact that it's adult entertainment, and so it needs this proper place. And I think, of course, somebody like Sexy Red is going to be a target because it's so egregious, right? Like she's twerking and doing all this stuff, right? And, all, and, and of course, the other girls are doing it too. But to me, again, at the end of the day, somebody has to support uh, and, and, um, and condone that in order for her to be so popular, Right, somebody's buying the um the material. Somebody's buying the music. Somebody's going to the concerts, right? So a lot of people act like they want you know righteousness and oh this is ridiculous this and that. But believe me, if she wasn't making money for the record companies, they would drop her like they drop all the other artists. So that's the whole thing. So who's supporting it? If we support, if we're supporting it, how can we say oh? You know she's she's bad and and, and you know this and that. Cause I just look at it again. I look at it as entertainment. The message is not for for young people. If that's if that's her her uh, audience, right? If that is her audience, the parents are at fault for letting for letting their kids be exposed to that. Other cultures are not allowing their children right to get exposed. You know to to these things. Right. These other cultures, you look at, uh, you know, again, like Chinese and uh, Japanese and Indian cultures. Right. With the with the the solid family structure. I'm not saying 100 percent, but for the most part. The protection is around the children as they develop. And that's what you have to do. It's just like uh, other creatures in nature, like young chickens and stuff. The mother is protecting them as they grow until they're able to fend for themselves. The problem is, is our community, we have a children and then basically letting them fend for themselves. They're getting exposed to all type of adult content. And then we wonder why they, you know, they wind up embodying these messages. And then, you know, they go and wind up making their lives harder, you know, at a very young age. Getting in trouble in the juvenile system. Getting incarcerated. Right. Having kids early before you can even take care of the kids right because now you have kids now you're seeking out drastic measures oh this job is not enough so i gotta go now i gotta start hustling and now it's just a domino effect so it's easy to blame sexy red or somebody like that it's easy to blame the artist but at the end of the day you're supporting the artist right listen to their music and things like that and if you like the music that's fine but you have to then take responsibility if you let your kids get to it. You know, it's like if you like any adult entertainment, right? If you watch porn, you got to take responsibility. If your kids, you know, you you come in the house one day and your kid is watching it because you slipped up or allowed them to gain access uh, to that. So another thing I want to say, too, is um, this is a title that I've coined. I don't know if anybody has said this before, but I call it the Barabbas effect. And... For anybody that's familiar with the scriptures, Barabbas was a, a criminal. And when Jesus was about to be crucified, Pontius Pilate in a story gave the um, the Jewish people a choice and said, hey, I'll release one of these prisoners to you. I'll, if you want, you can have Jesus and I'll crucify Barabbas or you could take Barabbas and I'll crucify Jesus. And they chose the criminal. They chose Barabbas. It's a fam- you know, famous story in the Bible. They chose Barabbas. And the way I look at that is that many times, right, we claim to want the best, right? We claim to want, you know, this uh, uh, golden age of uh, righteousness. And we want to return to, um, you know, morality and, um, you know, uh, the upstanding, you know, um, citizenship and all that stuff like that but the actions show otherwise right the artists that are the biggest or the ones that are saying the most negative things now somebody might say well how do you know that's us supporting them right how do, how is that us choosing barabbas maybe the industry is just pumping money into them now that's a good a good point to bring up however the industry is only going to pump money into 
them for a certain time. They have to they have to get um, a return on their investment. You take somebody like, for instance, like Little Nas X, for example, right? Obvious, obvious industry plant. All right, definitely pushing agendas, right? All of these people are there pushing agendas, right? And the industry, you know, make sure that he's seen everywhere, that the awards, all all this stuff. They make sure that these things happen. That's when they're making an investment, right? But at the end of the day, it's the people that have to connect and catch on and then support this artist. If the people don't support the artist, the artist gonna is going to disappear from the spotlight. But as long as the people are supporting... They're gonna keep, they're gonna keep giving and keep, um, you know, pushing this uh, type of uh, content. So it wasn't just nasty for the sake of nasty. It was like, okay, at least she's actually making music that you could like. And that's not me defending the raunchiness of that because even at that time, we knew that that music, that type of music from women was not really acceptable. That was not, Kim made a lot of waves with the way in which she presented herself. The, the cover of her hardcore album was debated for a very long time about what was the direction of female rappers going if, the, is this the new norm for the female rappers? Because remember, we also had we had the balance of the Lauren Hills. We had the balance of, we always gravitated not only towards the super sexualized female rappers, but we also gravitated towards just the female rappers that just had bars. This is a good point also that she speaks on. Again, this is the Crimson Cure speaking. Check her channel channel out. Um, this is a good point that she's uh, making in that there was more choice um, back in the day, uh, I remember again. You could listen to a uh, Public Enemy on the radio, and hear songs right about polit being politically and socially conscious. And then at the same time, you could hear, you know, like Cool G rap or something, right? You know, just uh, you know, with songs like Men at Work and uh, <clears throat> you know, and uh, Ill Street Blues and, and you know, songs of that nature that were more about you know, more about the streets. Um, so you had more of a, a variety and I think what has happened, like, especially like through, through the nineties is slowly that variety was kind of like cut down and one genre was kind of like the main genre, which was more of like the gangster rap, right? Every now and then, maybe in the nineties, we hear something, you know, Talib Kweli, most deaf, you know, some you know, uh, common, you know, some kind of conscious rap come out. And sometimes you hear like some po uh, party rap, but a lot of it just became more like just gangster rap. And one of the few artists that was still, um, you know, uh, putting out conscious messages was Kanye West, right? A college dropout, you know, albums, things like that. Um, but for the most part, it was just that one genre being pushed the gangster rap music and of course the culmination of that that genre is definitely like drill drill music you know um but we also again can't demonize the newer generation without acknowledging you know the music of you know of the past right we did have master p back in the day with with the ghetto dope album um the ice cream man all, you know all that the 99 ways to die you know, I'm from New York, but I was a big Master P fan also back in the day. Um, so we had a lot of albums like that giving you recipes to do certain things, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so let's not act like it was just all innocent back then. But what I will say is there was more choice. And like she was saying, how you had people like Lauren Hill to counterbalance like a little Kim and stuff like that. Now it's like all of the girls that are at least put before us in public are all doing it kind of doing the same thing and they're kind of competing with uh with each other like who has the biggest bbl who can who can do the most salacious you know activities right you don't have like some sister over here with you know uh, angela davis afro and she's just talking about um you know more conscious things but again is whose fault is that is that 
and this is a, a legitimate question and please get in the comments i love hearing you guys whether you agree with me disagree or you might have points that i'm missing i'm not thinking about um but again whose whose fault is is that that we don't have the v variety see again the money is what talks ultimately it's like if we're supporting a certain genre that's what the companies are going to put out they might try to force right a certain genre down your throat right pause if i could say that right they might try to force a certain genre of music down your throat but at the end of the day if the people aren't feeling it and not supporting it then they're gonna have to s switch directions so i think what happened is yes people have tried to do conscious rap and um socially conscious rap but at the end of the day enough people weren't feeling it for the record companies to be like you know what we're gonna really get behind get behind this type of music and again that's why i bring up the barabbas effect is because people will complain about the gangster rap and stuff like that but it's super popular and then that's what and that's what people want to hear they really want the they really want the wickedness they really want barabbas everybody wants to say it's 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 nice to say hey i want i want jesus right like i want you know that's what i want but because it sounds good to say right it's a positive thing to say nobody wants to say hey i want barabbas nobody wants to say hey i like hearing about um evil and um killing and and things like that like i like hearing gangster stories like no nobody really want to say that right it's not like acceptable but what shows are the most popular shows on TV, right? Dateline. How do you think Dateline lasts o over 20 years? All that show is the show is about is real, um, again, not trying to get in trouble with YouTube, but real, uh, um, you know, like homicide situations. You know what I'm saying? That show is popular. And then you have a bunch of other shows just as popular, like Snapped, right? All these, you know, sh you know, um, there's, there's like so many of them I can't even think of all of them right now That's what the people want to see That's the Barabbas effect The people are saying hey give us Barabbas We we, we want the, the wickedness Right We want to see We want to see the twerking Yeah go ahead take 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 your clothes off We we like that That's really what's in the heart In the mouth is oh yeah we want righteousness We want Jesus uh, We want things not to be like You know be this way But the actions show different and this is why that style of rap especially with the females uh is pushed because that's what's selling that's what the, the industry's making money off of if you stop um giving your money to them and listen listening to these radio stations those ratings started going down then they be like whoa how come you think how come you think you don't hear as much r&b right the love music people stop listening they used to have R and like R and B. I know in New York City you had R and B stations. You could catch some R and B now, but it's like you gotta look for it. It's the people reject that. I remember New York City, though you had you had like WBLS, you had uh Kiss, ninety eight point seven Kiss. Back in the day you had ninety two KTU. It was R and B R and B stations. You know, they playing Tina Turner back in the day. What's love got to do with it? Luther, all you know, all the love, Brian McKnight. All the love songs, boys, the man, all that stuff like that. The people decided that they want Barabbas, right? So now you got Barabbas, right? Now you have you know Glorilla, Sexy Red. You got all this drama going on, right? That's another thing, right? These shows, right? Bad Girls Club, all that stuff like that. That's what that's what that's what you really want. Let's let's continue. So like I said, let's not let's not make it seem like these artists are just being propped up and without any kind of um co signature from from the uh black population. Right. Didn't have to shake they butt. I mean, Eve wasn't somewhere twerking all the time with her booty in the air. And we rocked with we rocked with E V E. Okay, you can name three Eve songs. Okay, you can you can reach back and be like, oh, this was a bop. Okay. You can you can you can reach back and get 
a Foxy Brown song. We actually gravitated towards the other women. We gravitated towards the Queen Latifas. We gravitated towards the MC Lights. Like we supported them women too. Even Sister Soldier that was in with, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, she was rolling with a public enemy, I believe, at that time. We supported her. We supported Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill's, the miseducational Lauren Hill is an award-winning album. It's a hip-hop classic. It's one of the we best of all time. That. The women supported it. Okay? We even, even if you move towards like the 2000s stuff, we supported Missy Elliott. Missy wasn't nowhere naked. We, but we supported the mess out of her. We supported um, the Lady of Rage. We supported Bahamadia. We supported them women. And they all them women was not somewhere twerking. So that was not the totality of female rap, is my point. The 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 raunchy, super over sexualized female rapper was not, that was not the totality of, of the image of female rappers. So there was a balance. If you didn't want to listen to them, you didn't have to. It was almost niche. Kaya was, was almost a niche. Right? Trina and all them. That was like niche rap. You you had to, you know what I'm saying? Like, your, and your mom didn't want you listening to that. You had, if you was young, too young, you kind of had to sneak and listen to that. You listen to that at school with the kids and, you know what I'm saying? That's how you heard that. It was certain rap songs that they would not play until nighttime. Right? It was certain, it was certain rap videos that you couldn't get unless you paid your little 99 cents for the box. It wasn't on primetime of VH1 or MTV. It wasn't on some of that stuff was not playing on primetime Yo! and TV raps and stuff like that. They would play regular stuff. Even the radio wasn't really blasting that stuff to nighttime. You know what I'm saying? You could hear a, a raunchier kind of song or whatever. So there was some idea that this should not be just blasted, right, to everybody and children of all ages. So we had a concept that this was not going to be a good thing if if all the female rappers was nothing but a little Kim. Again, this uh, speaks to the point earlier. You did have uh, more of a variety, but the uh, the bigger issue is based or the bigger question rather is, OK, who's whose fault is it? Is it the people's fault for not supporting those artists? Because, yes, yeah, she did say, oh, we supported Lady of Rage. We supported, you know, uh, uh, the Queen Latifahs of the world and this and that. But it's easy to say that, yeah, we, we, we you know, we did. We showed them, showed them love. But did we give them enough support to where that's where they said, hey, we need more, where the industry said, hey, we need more Queen Latifahs. Believe me. If those type of artists were making selling millions and millions of records, they would do the same thing that they did with these female over sexualized rappers. They would get another one. See, when they saw Nicki Minaj doing what she was doing, they were like, oh, we got to get another one. Boom, you get Cardi B. Oh, my God. Look what look what's going on. And then you see these women coming out of the woodwork. Some hit, some missed. Right. You had like the Iggy Azaleas of the world. Right. They might have one song here or there and then then fall off. But nevertheless, they're still trying to stick with, you know, with what the formula, so to speak. Right. Then you have like city girls. Right. Oh, yeah. We got the city girls. Right. That's working. You see. So if the people support really, really supported the Queen Latifah's, right, the MC lights, then they would get, another, you know, another one because no, listen, no artist is going to just last forever. You know, they're going to have their, you know, their time for their popularity. And but of of course, if the genre is popular, then they're going to get another one that's like along the same, uh, you know, the same lines, uh, so to speak. So conscious rap, you know, the ne they'll get the next conscious rapper. So I think that 
yes, the industry is definitely, you know, it's entertainment industry. They're there to make money. Are there agendas being pushed? Of course. But at the end of the day, it's the people that have to decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to listen to that on um, Spotify. I'm going to listen to that on whatever social media platform, right? I'm going to download that, right? I'm going to purchase that. I'm going to listen to this radio station. That's the people making the choice. That's why I say they're, it's the, they're choosing Barabbas, right? But then trying to blame, then blaming the, the problems in the community on, us, you know, putting it on Sexy Red, like that's the scapegoat or the uh, uh, Cardi B or whoever the next the next one, the City Girls, this and that. Oh, they're promoting promiscuity and this and that. Yes, they are. But you don't have to listen. You don't have to support. You don't have to support that. Right? You don't have to support the, the F My Baby Daddy song and all that stuff like that. That's adult entertainment. Now, if you want to be entertained, listen to that as an adult. Right? Go ahead. But if you have, if you're playing that for your children in schools, things like that, there's a different issue. There's a deeper issue. That's the problem then. Because at that point, it shows that there's been a, a, a critical breakdown somewhere. Right, that you're gonna allow your child, whose brain is still developing, to um, accept these these messages into her or his head, and you can see the results. And again, the music is not directly responsible for right higher crime rates, higher incarceration rates, things like that. Right, there's many different fact, different causal factors that all combined. Right. They all combined. They create this thing. Of course, you know, you don't have jobs. Right. Uh, you don't have education. You put all this stuff together. Right. You have uh, poverty. Right. Low income housing. All, all this stuff like that. High crime rate. You put everything together and then you throw the music in on top of that. Right. That glorifies the the uh, the street life glorifies that culture. Right. Especially for a young kid. All of us that grew up in the hood, we know exactly what that looks like. We know what it looks like to see a dude that's only about 10 years older than you. Right. Say you're eight years old. The, that guy is 18. He's driving BMW. He's driving Mercedes. Surround, you know, always have a, a girl, a, 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 a nice looking girl with him. Has money. He might even give you here his twenty dollars. Go go buy you something. We all know what that that looks like. So. As a kid, that's highly impress impressionable, right? You, the music, you're looking at that guy. You're like, man, he matches the the guy on the music video. This guy look like, man, he look like the Migos. He dressed just like them. Hair done the same way, everything. Man, dude, he dressed just like Chief Keith. Man, I, I want that, right? Then you see your pops, right? Your pops coming home from the, from the, you know from the uh, factory, right? He's coming from the mechanic shop. That doesn't look as, as glorious, right? He's mad. That's even if you if the pops isn't in life. Then the mom, your mom is is so young, she's like more like your friend than your than your mother, you know. And then if she's working and stuff, she's doing the best she can. She's not there to, to supervise, so you kind of being raised by the, by your friends. Y'all raising each other. This where a lot of errors get made. So then the music is just more of a Trojan horse because it's promoting those messages. Because the imagery, messaging is very, very powerful, as you know. That's why they make these videos, man. The imagery is very powerful, right? You hear that nice beat, right? So that kind of hypnotizes you, right? The beat and music hypnotizes you and then hitting you, hitting you with the imagery and the, and the rep, and repetitive messages over and over and over again. Next thing you know... You're a young girl. Next thing you know, you're like, you know what? Let me start this OnlyFans. You're not thinking about the penalty. You're not thinking of the when it's going to hit the fan later on. You know? You're like, oh, I'm going to sleep with all these guys. Like, okay. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna be get on this Sugar Mama website. Right? That happens to those that are mentally vulnerable and weak. So it's kind of like all of the preconditions are set up in the community for for that to happen, for the in the, in the cities, for that to happen. Right, the broken out, the broken out home, the Trojan horse comes come right in with the messaging, and then unfortunately, the the parents that are there, they're too 
you know, too young or too immature to understand the detrimental effects until it's too late. And there's so many other factors, like I said, um, that, you know, we can't discuss in this particular video. But I just wanted to um, bring this video to light because I thought it was a good um, way to spark this discussion about just hip hop in general, because um, I tend to lean on the side. Of, hey, it's just entertainment. I don't try to demonize these artists and stuff like that. I understand. Like, listen, the subject matter is 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 definitely not for like much. It's just only for mature audiences, right? All this killing and stuff like that. But I look at I look at the same. Like, if you listen to drill rap, right? To me, what's the difference between listening to drill rap and then somebody watching Dateline? Or snap to one of those shows right on oxygen. It's the same. It's like the same thing. Do you listen to drill rap and then you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go do this now. It's the same thing. It's for mature audiences. Now, if you like it or not, that's a matter of taste. But for me to demonize and, and this and put it down and all this stuff and, and blame them for all the ills of the culture, to me, that that's incorrect. That's incorrect. What I do look at is I look at young entrepreneurs in their 20s, 30s. They made a lot of money. And they also employing a lot of other people and causing a lot of people to be un be employed. When they go to a, a live show or something, you know how many jobs like are being um, created at that point? Somebody has to do the security. That's a lot of jobs, right? Somebody has to work at the, the ticket booth, right? Somebody has to set up, set up the venue, Right. Somebody has to, you know, put the speakers up and all that stuff. The microphones are wiring the cameraman, all that stuff. You create a lot of jobs for people from state to state, from country to country, worldwide. And you're feeding, feeding your fam your family. So to me, that's the positive part of it. You know, just like with any other corporation, would it be there are there agendas? Yes, there are. Are there agendas that negatively affect your your community? Yes, but the way to counteract these things is by not supporting, right? Not supporting. But what I'm saying is don't be fake about it. Don't say, hey, I really want Jesus, but you really choose him, but rabbits. If you like, if you like that stuff, it's okay. And, but all I'm saying is if you like it, you got to make sure that your kids are protected. Cause without without the kids of the future the future generations if you if you don't have that you're not gonna have this society you're not gonna have any society there will be no black cult culture or anything like that it'd be destroyed right so this is why I think there's such like a like a urgency or you see a lot of people coming out against this but like I like to try to put it in the proper perspective that yes these people um do have agendas or they're being, you know, they're pushing an agenda that they've been given, right? They might've sold their soul and stuff like that. If you want to say these things, but again, you don't have to have to listen. Like I've never heard, I've never heard a, a Glorilla song before. You know, maybe I'll click on YouTube after this video and listen to one. I've never heard, I never heard a Glorilla song before. I never heard city girls before. You see what I'm saying? So if you never heard it, if I, if I never listened to it, it's like, it's out of out of sight, out of mind. Basically, I would have to go look. I would actually have to go look on the um on the internet and find like the lyrics and and go through. I just know about them from hearing other videos and stuff. But I, have I ever like bumped it or listened to it? No. You know, so it's just what I'm saying is that we, as a group, have a lot more power than we think we have. You know, and I just don't like the idea of always coming at this type of stuff from the victim mentality like oh this artist is is out there to program the youth and all this stuff like they might be but you have the power to not allow your kids to listen to that <laughs> to that stuff you have the power to not listen to it yourself you have the power not to support not to put your hard-earned dollars toward these um toward these entities if you think uh, they're so evil and like I said on an extreme note I just think it's wrong to pick one person and be like oh they the cause uh, they the face of everything 
Sexy Red. Oh, Sexy Red. She, it's her now, right? It's her turn. First is Nicki Minaj, then it's Cardi B. Oh, now Sexy Red. Like, basically, whoever's the most popular, now that's the one that's causing the damage in the black community. Right? The damage been there before she was even heard of. Like, who was to blame back, you know, back in the 2000s? It was still there. Same stuff was going on. Right? So, what I'm saying is let's look at the in the mirror and say, okay, this is what we got to do. And I'm saying first start with the family. Right? Fine. Women, you are the choosers in society. Without women, this society is destroyed. You show me a good society, I'm going to show you good women, good strong women, good protected women. Women, you in charge of everything. Stop choosing the these guys having ba- having babies, and then you know you you are the choosers. You you have so much power. You you're the you're the one that chooses whose leg who whose seed gets to go on, who goes on to the next generation. So choose wisely, right? Don't just have you have kids with with anybody. The person's taking off. The ho- then the home breaks down. Then it's cycle. Can you know cycles continuing? So start start with the 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 family. You start with that. Choosing wisely, you know, and work and working on ourselves. All that other stuff will fall fall in the place. Next thing you know, you find like man, they won't be able to push certain artists. They we won't we won't be dumbed down to the to uh so much where. We just uh, accept these all of these artists and make make them millionaires, right? Because if they're really bad for our community and stuff, how is it that we making them mil- millionaires many times, many times over, right? How is it that we're allowing these artists to to um, promote gang culture, right? We know these things are are detriment, right? But we promoting the same artists. That affiliated with all his gangs, crimes, and causing pain and tears and things like that in the communities. So anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. Please get in the comment section, whether up, down, good, good or bad. Let me know. Please hit the thumbs up. Please consider uh, uh, supporting the channel uh, through one of the uh, donation links. And uh, again, shout out to the Crimson Cure for uh, this. Uh, Uh, content right here and uh you know i love you guys and i'll see you guys on the next video and females i definitely want to hear from uh you guys too let me know what what y'all think because i know your perspective might be a little different and uh brothers let me hear from you guys too all right i'll see y'all in the next video